welcome um so we are still on linear algebra and we started with um vector spaces and subspaces okay and we have to get to the point where we talk about the basis of a vector space and um before we go that go to that point we have to understand what we call linear combination and span and then we'll extend this idea to linear dependence and linearly independence okay so yeah let's start with this linear combination and span so if you have a vector okay so I have here let v be a vector space over field f okay and then s is some set of vectors that is a subset of v such that x is given by this u1 little u1 little u2 all the way to u sub n and all these are vectors okay so these u sub 1 u sub 2 all the way to u sub n are all vectors okay and we say that there's a vector u which is also an element of the vector space capital v it's a linear combination of vectors in s if there are scalars a sub 1 all the way to a sub n in the field such that you can write your vector v in the capital v as a sub 1 times u sub 1 plus i mean in other words you can write your vector v as some scalar multiple of the vectors in the s okay but we have a summation in them so you have some number times the first vector plus some number times the second vector plus some other number all the way to the point you get to the last vector in s okay and then the span on the other hand of s denoted as span s is the set of all such linear combinations of elements in s so all the set of elements or the the set of all the elements that you can write as a span of or uh, as a linear combination of the elements in s if you can combine all of them or if you can gather all of them together then it becomes the span of s what i mean is i know that there's a vector v that can be written as a linear combination of elements in s if i get another c another vector c x that can also be written as a linear combination of um some a1 u sub 1 all the way to some a n u sub n then this x and v will be belong to the span of s so we're collecting every vector that can be written as a linear combination of elements in s that becomes the span of s okay now let's pick an example to look at what we mean so here what i have here is that i'm taking my vector space capital v to be r2 and then my little s as a subset of v to be the vectors 1 0 and then 0 1 so this can be u sub 1 this can be u sub 2 and here we have only two vectors so this definition is for any number of vectors you can get okay but this is a particular case where we have only two vectors u1 and u2 and i've chosen my little v as a vector in capital v okay so remember the v capital v i don't use any arrow on it so i'm i'm referring to the vector space and then the vectors i use arrows on them okay so this is actually a two-dimensional vector okay and i'm saying that it belongs to the the vector space so can we write this v as some scalar a1 times u sub 1 plus a2 times u sub 2 and you know your u1 and u2 here okay if you look at this very carefully you can write it an equation for it okay that this is equal to a1 times u1 which is 1 0 plus a2 times 0 1 and this is going to give you um, let me clean this before we came back we'll come back to that okay then this is going to give you negative 1 3 because if i distribute a sub 1 through this i'm going to have a sub 1 here and then 0 plus 0 a sub 2 and if you do the addition you're going to have um a sub 1 comma a sub 2 that's vector addition so i add component wise okay so for these two vectors to be equal i have videos on vectors for these two vectors to be equal the component should be the same okay so for them to be we are saying they are equal then it means that um a sub 1 is actually negative 1 and then a sub 2 is equal to 3 
So what we mean is that this vector v, which is negative one three, is equal to a sub one is negative one into u one, which where u sub one is one zero plus three into zero one. And if you look at it very carefully, that is exactly um, what will give you this v. Okay. So v has been written as a linear combination of elements or vectors in S. These are the vectors in S. And then the a sub 1 we're dealing with in our previous one, this constants or these scalars are what we are seeing here, negative 1 and 3. Okay. I hope this makes sense to you. So if you can write some giving vectors a linear combination in this form, then this vector v actually belongs to the span of s because we say the span of s is the set of all vectors that can be written as a linear combination of elements in s now the question i was asking first was what is the span of s what are some of the vectors we can call they belong to the span of s if any vector exists as this let's say x and is given as maybe some component x1 x2 okay or x sub 1 x sub 2 then this will be a linear combination of the vectors in s so you'll be like um, you have a sub 1 into vectors in s is this a sub 2 into 0 1 if you do the addition very well you're going to have a sub 1 a sub 2 so x will then be equal to because if I if I quit both of them i'm going to have a sub 1 to be s1 and a sub 2 to be s2 so if x is equal to this vector x1 x2 then s can be written as x1 times 1 0 which is the u1 in the s then x sub 2 into 0 1 so it turns out that each vector you pick in r2 because r2 every vector you pick in r2 is has a two dimension so it's like a and b you have an s component and a y component i mean you can think of it that's that way okay so it turns out that every element you have in r2 even the zero vector which is zero zero can be written as zero times one zero plus zero times zero one okay this will give you that so the, remember the scalars are not necessarily supposed to be non-zero it can be zeros it can be non-zeros whatever we don't really care all we care about is getting a scalar that can be multiplied to the element in the vector um, the sub the set s sorry so that when you sum them or when you do the linear combination you get your vector that you need so it turns out that the span of s is actually um sorry the span of s is actually r2 because every vector you have in r2 can be written as a linear combination of these two and this, at some point, you realize that this is actually the basis for R2, okay? We've not talked about basis, but I'm just mentioning it here um, so that when we get to that point, you understand it better, okay? Now, let's look at something. Um, let's say I have S defined as the empty set, okay? Or oh, let me say empty like that. It has no element. The question is, what is the span of S? Now, it raises a question because like, what can you write? What are the elements of S? We don't know. We don't have any element of S. So the question is, what vector do I have? To, can I form without needing any vector at all? Now, the idea here is that a span of the empty, empty set. So you can say span of phi or... Um, span of the empty set okay it's actually the zero vector and it's the zero vector because um what you need the span the understanding of the span is that um we need a linear combination of elements in this set to get this vector okay but when you look at the empty set there's nothing in it okay and there's only one vector that you can form without using any other vector or any other scalars. That is a zero vector. The zero vector do not need any scalars to be formed. Okay. We just know that it exists out of existing sake. So 
um the span of the empty set is the zero vector i hope you learned something new stay tuned as i bring to you um more in-depth understanding of linear algebra and then the idea of basis and you know um dimensions and the rest in our next discussion see you